Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be making this magnetic key holder. I will show you how to dye, glue, stitch, and finish the edges so you will have a nice looking piece to walk away with. Let's get started first by tracing and cutting out the pattern. When tracing out patterns, I like to use an orange or red speedball pen. It makes uh, tracing the edge a little more precise and quicker. Don't worry too much about the line that's created. You'll end up uh, beveling that off or sanding it off a little bit later. I'm just tracing on the liner piece here. For the first few cuts, I like to use a rotary cutter and a ruler to get all the straight lines perfect. All right, you'll notice there's a really tight curve on the inside edge of the exterior piece. Uh, for that, I'm gonna go ahead and use a 7 16th inch hole punch and take care of that curve. At this point, I like to switch over to my scissors. Uh, these are a special type of scissor used in sewing. It's called a ginger uh, micro serrated scissor. It does a really good job of holding onto the leather while you cut. On this piece, I've used a line 24 snap. It's the larger of the snaps. And for that, we're gonna need a larger hole on a rotary punch, I use the second to largest setting. Giving it a twist can make for a little cleaner of a cut. All right, next we're going to dye the leather. Hand dyeing vegetable tan leather is notoriously finicky. To help prevent blotchy marks, we will be deglazing the surface. Okay, so to deglaze, I use a high proof alcohol, a 91% alcohol, and I just squirt it right on there, a little paper towel, and you're just gonna rub the surface like that. This removes any waxes and oils um, that may have accumulated while the leather was sitting around or while you've been handling it. All right, to dye the leather, I'm using a spirit-based dye. It's a light brown from Thebings. I'm gonna just pour it into a little container here. Try not to make a mess. Always make sure to screw the cap back on. That way you don't spill it all over your table. I'm gonna get a fresh paper towel and we'll rub that into the leather. Pretty simple, we're just gonna use the circular motions and go over it in an even pattern. I actually don't mind uh, if the dye doesn't go on perfectly evenly, it kinda builds a little character into the piece. Uh, you know, when you get it perfectly uniformly dyed, it, it tends not to look quite as nice in my opinion. All right, a little alcohol on the uh, paper towel will help take off the dye that got on your fingers. Uh, if you're going to do a lot of dyeing, I'd probably put on a pair of gloves first. Now let's prep the top edge of the pocket since we won't be able to reach it after gluing. First I'll apply a little bit of water with a stamp sponge just to the top edge there. I'm using a number one beveler and we're just going to go over just this top edge. Now I've placed this piece on top of a rubber mat to help me push into the table a little bit to get that thin edge to to really catch on the beveling tool. So now we need to dye the edge after we've beveled it. And for that, I have a refillable marker. I put a chocolate brown in there. These markers are great because they really save you from making a big mess of dye, especially when you need to just dye a little bit of an edge. What you do is you can take that marker and just Rub the edge of it against where you need. We can burnish the edge because it's still a little bit damp. 
just by taking a paper towel and kind of wrapping that around your finger a little bit. You probably apply a little bit of pressure and you're just gonna rub it. Create some heat and friction. Another option to burnish is to use a Dremel with a little special tip. It's a Coco Bolo tip and it's specifically for burnishing inside edges of like belt loops and tight spaces like this. At this point, I'm going to install the male snap piece. It's a line 24 snap. And I'm gonna take this piece, put the backing in, put the top stud in. Uh, if you're gonna be doing this for a long time, I highly recommend getting at least a hand press and even better is a foot press as you can apply even more pressure with a foot press. Now we are ready to glue it all up with a magnet in between the liner place. I'll be using a neodymium magnet, which is an extremely strong magnet. Be careful handling it. It tends to fly out of your fingers to the nearest metal object. To glue this piece, I'm using a PVA glue. It's called Reina Aquilum 315. I like it because there's basically no fumes. Um, it's quick to set and it dries clear. I'm using my spreader to spread the glue all the way up to the edge. Uh, this is pretty important. If you want a nice uh, clean edge when you're on your finished piece, you gotta get those edges nice, nice and perfect from the very beginning. So what we're gonna do now is wait until this dries so pretty much clear and then it's ready to set the magnet on top of it and press it onto the other leather piece. Okay, so I'm gonna take my magnets and center it and put it about a half an inch above the bottom edge. I'm gonna put a little more glue on the top of the magnet. And we'll just line this up and press it in place. Don't worry about glue spilling over the edge. We're gonna sand that off a little bit. Okay, once we have that pressed in place, we're gonna go ahead and flip that over and we're gonna sand the edge of the liner piece just where the pocket is going to touch it. So that helps the glue stick properly. So we can kind of fold it there to get a little bit of an idea of where that spot ends. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna sand about 3 sixteenths of an inch in from the edge. Just needs a little bit to roughen it up. A little bit more glue on there. Again, get the glue right to the edge. Press that in place. Same with the other side. Usually when you glue a piece, you're also gonna to wanna to hammer it with a smooth-faced hammer. This helps the glue really clamp down on the leather. All right, now that we have this all glued up, we need to sand the edges flush. In the past, I would have used uh, different grits of sandpaper on meticulously over the edge. Um, I've since invested in a small sanding machine, so I highly suggest if you have a belt sander, use that, it'll make really quick work of this, and it creates a nice, perfectly even edge. Now we need to get the top to bend properly, and with a liner, that can be tricky. If you just bend it over, it will crinkle the interior. The workaround I'll use is to wet the exterior and bend it to help the leather stretch. All right, so with a damp sponge, I'm just gonna wet the area that is going to bend. Let that sit for a second or two, so let the moisture get deeper into the leather. And then we're just going to bend it over so that the hole we punched up here meets up with this hardware down here. Now that we have the leather stretched a little bit, we're going to mark the stitch line with this tool. 
I have it set for about 3 sixteenths of an inch from the edge. To punch the stitch holes, I have a set of these diamond shaped prongs. Uh, they're set to 6 SPI. They're just a cheap set, but I use them for pretty much everything. Uh, if you get really into this, they have all types of different styles, lengths, and different widths of prong. Um, so you can use them on different thicknesses of thread. The thread I'll be using is a 1.2 millimeter Ritza Tiger thread. It's a very nice thread. It lays flat. Um, it's extremely durable and I use it on most of my projects. So the first thing we want to do here is take a look at the back side. We're going to want to make sure that the prong skips over this pocket and doesn't tear the edge the prongs are going to go more or less on either side of that pocket. Now starting down at one end, not too close to the bends there or else it'll tear through. I'm pushing down with a fair amount of pressure here and I'm trying to keep this straight up and down. So it'll go through the other side at the same spot. And when you do your next set, all you have to do is line up the last prong and the last hole that you made and the spacing will be the same. And when you start to approach these two extra holes, I like to switch over to the two prong again and kind of work my way towards them. And you get really close, uh, just to cheat one of the holes, I can put a one prong right where I want it, right in between the two. All right, when you get to this uh, tighter edge over here, switch over to the two prong. And we're going to try and stay on that stitch line, more or less. Alright, now that we have that all punched out, uh, we will be ready to go ahead and saddle stitch this. I'm going to hand stitch this with Ritza 1.2mm Tiger Thread and a number 2 John James Harness Needle. For detailed info on how to saddle stitch, I have a free tutorial on my tutorials page. So you'll notice that the hardware is going to get in the way when you, you try to clamp this down. So I've actually taken this little scrap piece of leather that I punched a hole in on the edge so it can fit over that. And in my case, I actually need two of those to make it work. So even though this is a really small piece, it actually takes quite a bit of thread. Uh, you're going to want to cut at least a full two, like arm's length if you have your arms stretched out. And even then, I'd add on an extra foot on top of that. Okay, go ahead and thread your needle. Pull it out about six inches. And then you're going to take the tip of the needle and puncture the thread. Just like that. Then you pull that piece down over the eye of the needle. So you have a little loop like that. Now you don't have to pull this tight. It actually works better if you keep it like that. Go ahead and do the same thing to the other side. Now I have my piece set up so that the exterior facing is on my right hand side because I like to start stitches with the right needle and then go left. So we're going to start with the bottom hole here. Put your needle in and you're going to pull it so that the needles are equal on both sides. The, th the thread length is equal on both sides. So once you put the needle through, this needle is going to be on the back side of that one. Pull it through a little ways. Now you just rotate. Put that needle through the same hole. Once it's through a little bit, take your thread, put it over the top. Pull it nice and tight. Now you just repeat on the next hole. Comes in. This is on the back side. 
rotates, go through the same hole, over the top, pull it through. Okay, to finish up the stitch, we're gonna have to back stitch a couple stitches just, just to lock the loose threads into place. Uh, in order to do that, what we're, we're gonna basically just reverse the same process. So I'm gonna start with this side. And this is gonna go on the front of this needle. Everything's in reverse, remember. Rotate, put the other needle through. Wrap this over the top. You might have to work that needle through a little bit. That's one. Over the top. take this needle and just feed it through to the other side so both stitches end up on the same side just like that now we can cut this off at this point you may need to resand the edge if your stitching causes it to go out of alignment otherwise we will be moving on to beveling dyeing and burnishing the edge okay let's dampen the edge a little bit with a sponge first just very lightly i like to use a glove on my free hands because this tool tends to slip a little bit and it'll nick off your skin and a lot of times it'll take your nail right off so I'm using a number one beveler on this because it's such a thin edge. You don't really need to take too much off. Okay, to die, I'm gonna use the pen tool again. Just very carefully go over the edge. While this edge is still wet from the dye, we're gonna go ahead and burnish it. There are different tools you can use. Uh, this is a handheld Cocoa Bolo burnisher with different grooves in it. So you can basically fit it into the right groove and just work it by hand. A good amount of pressure. I'm just kind of slicking up that edge. It actually works quite well. Sometimes I find like curves like this a little bit hard to get to with the pressure, so I switched to my Dremel burnisher. To finish things up, we just need to apply a little oil and wax and install the female snap. In my shop, I make an oil and wax mixture out of all natural ingredients. It's called Spiff and Shine. Uh, it's beeswax and olive oil, basically. So what you can do is I actually sell this in the shop. You can take a little bit of it, the paper towel, and you just rub it on. Give it a nice even layer all the way around. I got under the pocket a little bit. 
Okay, I'm gonna let that uh, sit for a few minutes to let the oil and wax just absorb into the leather. And we're gonna come back and wipe it down with a paper towel. So I just like to buff it smooth and get all that wax off. And the wax will have kind of embedded itself into the pores of the leather. It gives it a subtle sheen. You can tell right there. Okay, while we're at it, I'm going to wax the edge and I have Columbia wax in black. There's a few different ways you can apply this. Since this is such a small item, I'm going to just briskly rub this on the exterior, on the, the edges only, and then we can use a, um, a little rag to buff it smooth. Going briskly like this helps to build up a little heat, which causes the wax to melt into the edge. So some parts will need a little extra. You might have to put on a few layers until you get that nice glossy sheen on it. All right, now we just need to install the female snap. So I'm gonna take these guys out of there. And again, I'm using a line 24 snap. Test that out. Be a little tight at first because the leather hasn't quite stretched out yet, but gonna work your key in there. Like that. Alright, this key holder is ready to go. You can store it uh, under a desk in a secret hiding spot outside on a metal object. I would not put this on your car though because vibration can cause it to come loose. Alright, if you've enjoyed this tutorial, I've got many more like it on my tutorials page. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.